Chapter Two of the Diary of Samuel Pepys, sixteen sixty. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicole Lee. The Diary of Samuel Pepys, sixteen sixty, by Samuel Pepys. February sixteen fifty nine, sixteen sixty. February first. In the morning, went to my office, where afterwards. The old man brought me my letters from the carrier. At noon I went home, and dined with my wife on peas porridge, and nothing else. After that I went to the hall, and there met with Mr. Swan, and went with him to Mr. Downing's counsellor, who did put me in very little hopes about the business between Mr. Downing and Squib, and told me that Squib would carry it against him, at which I was much troubled, and with him went to Lincoln's Inn and there spoke with his attorney, who told me the day that was appointed for the trial. From thence I went to Sir Harry Wright's, and got him to give me his hand for the sixty pounds, which I am to-morrow to receive from Mr. Calthrop, and from thence to Mrs. Jem, and spoke with Madam Scott and her husband, who did promise to have the thing for her neck done this week. Thence home, and took Gamma East, and James the Porter, a soldier, to my lord's lodgings who told me how they were drawn into the field to-day, and that they were ordered to march away to-morrow, to make room for General Monk. But they did shut their Colonel Fitch, and the rest of the officers, out of the field, and swore they would not go without their money, and if they would not give it them, they would go where they might have it, and that was the city. So the Colonel went to the Parliament, and commanded what money could be got, to be got against to-morrow for them, and all the rest of the soldiers in town, who in all places made a mutiny this day, and do agree together. Here I took some bedding to send to Mrs. Anne, for her to lie in, now she hath her fits of the egg. Thence I went to Will's, and stayed like a fool there, and played at cards till nine o'clock, and so came home, where I found Mr. Hunt and his wife, who stayed, and sat with me till ten o'clock, and so good night. Second. Drank at Harper's with Doling, and so to my office, where I found all the officers of the regiments in town, waiting to receive money, that their soldiers might go out of town, and what was in the exchequer they had. At noon, after dining at home, I called at Harper's for Doling, and he and I met with Llewellyn, and drank with him at the exchequer at Charing Cross, and thence he and I went to the temple, to Mr. Calthrop's chamber, and from thence had his man by water to London Bridge, to Mr. Calthrop, a grocer, and received sixty pounds for my lord. In our way we talked with our waterman, White, who told us how the watermen had lately been abused by some that had a desire to get in to be watermen to the state, and had lately presented an address of nine or ten thousand hands, to stand by this Parliament, when it was only told them that it was to a petition against Hackney Coaches, and that to-day they had put out another to undeceive the world and to clear themselves, and that among the rest Crop, my waterman, and one of great practice, was one that did cheat them thus. After I had received the money, we went to the bridge tavern, and drank a quart of wine, and so back by water, landing Mr. Calthrop's man at the temple, and we went homewards. But over against Somerset House, hearing the noise of guns, we landed, and found the strand full of soldiers. So I took my money, and went to Mrs. Johnson, my lord sempstress, and giving her my money to lay up, Doling and I went upstairs to a window, and looked out, and see the foot face the horse, and beat them back, and stood bawling and calling in the street for a free parliament, and money. By and by a drum was heard to beat a march, coming towards them, and they got all ready again, and faced them, and they proved to be of the same mind with them, and so they made a great deal of joy to see one another. After all this I took my money, and went home on foot, and laying up my money, and changing my stockings and shoes, I this day having left off my great skirt suit, and put on my white suit with silver lace coat, and went over to Harper's, where I met with W. Simons, Doling, Llewellyn, and three merchants, one of which had occasion to use a porter. So they sent for one, and James the soldier came, who told us how they had been all day and night upon their guard at St. James's, and that through the whole town they did resolve to stand to what they had began, and that to-morrow he did believe they would go into the city, and be received there. After all this we went to a sport called Selling of a Horse for a Dish of Eggs and Herrings, and sat talking there till almost twelve o'clock, and then parted. They were to go as far as Aldgate. Home and to bed. 
Third, drank my morning draught at Harper's, and was told there that the soldiers were all quiet upon promise of pay. Thence to St. James's Park, and walked there to my place for my flagellate, and then played a little, it being a most pleasant morning, and sunshine. Back to Whitehall, where in the guard-chamber I saw about thirty or forty prentices of the city, who were taken at twelve o'clock last night, and brought prisoners hither. Thence to my office, where I paid a little more money to some of the soldiers, under Lieutenant Colonel Miller, who held out the tower against the Parliament, after it was taken away from Fitch by the Committee of Safety, and yet he continued in his office. About noon Mrs. Turner came to speak with me, and Joyce, and I took them and shewed them the manner of the houses sitting, the doorkeeper very civilly opening the door for us. Thence with my cousin Roger Pepys, it being term time, we took him out of the hall to Priors, the Rhenish wine-house, and there had a pint or two of wine, and a dish of anchovies, and bespoke three or four dozen bottles of wine for him, against his wedding. After this done he went away, and left me order to call and pay for all that Mrs. Turner would have. So we called for nothing more there, but went and bespoke a shoal of mutton at Wilkinson's, to be roasted as well as it could be done, and sent a bottle of wine home to my house. In the meantime she and I and Joyce went walking all over Whitehall, whither General Monk was newly come and we saw all his forces march by, in very good plight, and stout officers. Thence to my house where we dined, but with a great deal of patience, for the mutton came in raw, and so we were fain to stay the stewing of it. In the meantime we sat studying a posy, for a ring for her, which she is to have at Roger Pepys's his wedding. After dinner I left them and went to hear news, but only found that the Parliament House was most of them with Monk at Whitehall, and that in his passing through the town he had many calls to him for a free Parliament, but little other welcome. I saw in the palace-yard how unwilling some of the old soldiers were yet to go out of town without their money, and swore if they had it not in three days, as they were promised, they would do them more mischief in the country than if they had stayed here, and that is very likely, the country being all discontented. The town and guards are already full of monks' soldiers. I return, and it growing dark. I and they went to take a turn in the park, where Theophila, who was sent for us to dinner, outran my wife and another poor woman, that laid a pot of ale with me that she would outrun her. After that I set them as far as Charing Cross, and there left them and my wife, and I went to see Mrs. Anne, who began very high about a flock-bed I sent her, but I took her down. Here I played at cards till nine o'clock, so home and to bed. Fourth. In the morning at my lute an hour, and so to my office, where I stayed expecting to have Mr. Squibb come to me, but he did not. At noon, walking in the hall, I found Mr. Swan, and got him and Captain Stone together, and there advised about Mr. Downing's business. So to Will's, and sat there till three o'clock, and then to Mr. Swan's, where I found his wife in very genteel mourning for her father, and took him out by water to the counsellor at the temple, Mr. Stevens, and from thence to Gray's Inn, thinking to speak with Southerton Ellis, but found him not. So we met with an acquaintance of his in the walks, and went and drank, where I ate some bread and butter, having ate nothing all day, while they were by chance discoursing of Marriott, the great eater, so that I was, I remember, ashamed to eat what I would have done. Here Swan shewed us a ballad to the tune of Mardyke, which was most incomparably wrote in a printed hand, which I borrowed of him, but the song proved but silly, and so I did not write it out. Thence we went, and leaving Swan at his master's, my lord Widrington, I met with Spicer, Washington, and D. Vines, in Lincoln's Inn Court and they were buying of a hanging-jack to roast birds on, of a fellow that was there selling of some. I was fain to slip from there, and went to Mrs. Cruz to her, and advised about a maid to come and be with Mrs. Jem, while her maid is sick, but she could spare none. Thence to Sir Harry Wright's, but my lady not being within, I spoke to Mrs. Carter about it, who will get one against Monday. So with a link-boy to Scott's, where Mrs. Anne was in a heat, but I spoke not to her, but told Mrs. Jem what I had done, and after that went home and wrote letters into the country by the post, and then played a while on my lute, and so done, to supper and then to bed. All the news to-day is that the Parliament this morning voted the house to be made up of four hundred forthwith. This day my wife killed her turkeys that Mr. Shepley gave her, that came out of Zealand with my lord, and could not get her maid Jane by no means at any time to kill anything. Fifth, Lord's Day. In the morning before church time Mr. Hawley, who had for this day or two looked something sadly, which methinks did speak something in his breast concerning me, came to me telling me that he was out twenty-four pounds, which he could not tell what was become of, 
and that he do remember that he had such a sum in a bag the other day, and could not tell what he did with it, at which I was very sorry, but could not help him. In the morning to Mr. Gunning, where a stranger, an old man, preached a good honest sermon, upon what manner of love is this that we should be called the sons of God. After sermon I could not find my wife, who promised to be at the gate against my coming out, and waited there a great while, then went to my house, and finding her gone, I returned and called at the chequers, thinking to dine at the ordinary with Mr. Chetwin and Mr. Thomas, but they not being there, I went to my father, and found her there, and there I dined. To their church in the afternoon, and in Mrs. Turner's pew, my wife took up a good black hood, and kept it. A stranger preached a poor sermon, and so read over the whole book of the story of Tobit. After sermon, home with Mrs. Turner, stayed with her a little while, then she went into the court to a christening, and we to my father's, where I wrote some notes for my brother John, to give to the mercers to-morrow, it being the day of their apposition. After supper, home, and before going to bed I stayed writing of this day its passages, while a drum came by, beating of a strange manner of beat, now and then a single stroke, which my wife and I wondered at, what the meaning of it should be. This afternoon at church I saw Dick Cumberland, newly come out of the country from his living, but did not speak to him. Sixth. Before I went to my office I went to Mr. Crews, and paid Mr. Andrews the same sixty pounds that he had received of Mr. Calthrop the last week. So back to Westminster, and walked with him thither, where we found the soldiers all set in the palace yard, to make way for General Monk to come to the house. At the hall we parted, a meeting swan, he and I to the swan, and drank our morning draught. So back again to the hall, where I stood upon the steps, and saw Monk go by, he making observance to the judges as he went along. At noon my father dined with me upon my turkey, that was brought from Denmark, and after dinner he and I to the Bullhead Tavern, where we drank half a pint of wine, and so parted. I to Mrs. Anne, and Mrs. Jem being gone out of the chamber, she and I had a very high bout. I rattled her up, she being in her bed, but she becoming more cool, we parted pretty good friends. Thence I went to Will's, where I stayed at cards till ten o'clock, losing half a crown, and so home to bed. 7th. In the morning I went early to give Mr. Hawley notice of my being forced to go into London, but he having also business, we left our office business to Mr. Spicer, and he and I walked as far as the temple, where I halted a little, and then went to Paul's school, but it being too soon, went and drank my morning draught with my cousin Tom Pepys the turner, and saw his house and shop, thence to school, where he that made the speech for the seventh form in praise of the founder, did show a book which Mr. Crumlin had lately got, which is believed to be of the founder's own writing. After all the speeches, in which my brother John came off as well as any of the rest, I went straight home and dined, then to the hall, where in the palace I saw monk soldiers abuse Billing and all the Quakers, that were at a meeting-place there, and indeed the soldiers did use them very roughly, and were to blame. So after drinking with Mr. Spicer, who had received six hundred pounds for me this morning, I went to Captain Stone, and with him by coach to the Temple Gardens, all the way talking of the disease of the stone, where we met Mr. Squibb, but would do nothing till to-morrow morning. Thence back on foot home, where I found a letter from my lord in character, which I construed, and after my wife had shewn me some ribbon and shoes, that she had taken out of a box of Mr. Montague's, which formerly Mr. Kipps had left here, when his master was at sea, I went to Mr. Crewe, and advised with him about it, it being concerning my lord's coming up to town, which he desires upon my advice the last week in my letter. Thence calling upon Mrs. Anne, I went home, and wrote in character to my lord in answer to his letter. This day Mr. Crewe told me that my lord St. John is for a free Parliament, and that he is very great with Monk, who hath now the absolute command and power, to do anything that he hath a mind to do. Mr. Moore told me of a picture hung up at the exchange, of a great pair of buttocks, shooting of a turd into Lawson's mouth, and over it was wrote, The thanks of the house. Boys do now cry, Kiss my Parliament, instead of kiss my rump, so great and general a contempt is the rump come to, among all the good and bad. Eighth. A little practice on my flagellate, and afterwards walking in my yard, to see my stock of pigeons, which begin now with the spring to breed very fast. I was called on by Mr. Fosson, my fellow pupil at Cambridge, and I took him to the swan in the palace yard, and drank together our morning draught. Thence to my office, where I received money, and afterwards Mr. Carter, my old friend at Cambridge, meeting me as I was going out of my office, I took him to the Swan, and in the way I met with Captain Lidcote, and so we three went together and drank there, 
the captain talking as high as ever he did, and more because of the fall of his brother Thurlow. Hence I went to Captain Stone, who told me how Squib had been with him, and that he could do nothing with him. So I returned to Mr. Carter, and with him to Will's, where I spent upon him and Monsieur Lampertinon, alias Mr. Butler, who I took thither with me, and thence to a Rhenish wine-house, and in our way met with Mr. Houle, where I paid for my cousin Roger Pepys his wine, and after drinking we parted. So I home, in my way delivering a letter, which among the rest I had from my lord to-day, to Sir N. Wheeler. At home my wife's brother brought her a pretty black dog, which I liked very well, and went away again. Hence, sending a porter with a hamper of bottles to the temple, I called in my way upon Mrs. Jem, who was much frighted, till I came to tell her that her mother was well. So to the temple, where I delivered the wine, and received the money of my cousin Roger that I laid out, and thence to my father's, where he shewed me a base angry letter that he had newly received from my uncle Robert, about my brother John, at which my father was very sad, but I comforted him, and wrote an answer. My brother John has an exhibition granted him from the school. My father and I went down to his kitchen, and there we eat and drank, and about nine o'clock I went away homewards, and in Fleet Street received a great jostle from a man that had a mind to take the wall, which I could not help. I came home and to bed, went to bed with my head not well by my too much drinking to-day, and I had a boil under my chin, which troubled me cruelly. Ninth. Soon as out of my bed I wrote letters into the country to go by carrier to-day. Before I was out of my bed I heard the soldiers very busy in the morning, getting their horses ready, where they lay at Hilton's, but I knew not then their meaning in so doing. After I had wrote my letters, I went to Westminster up and down the hall, and with Mr. Swan walked a good deal talking about Mr. Downing's business. I went with him to Mr. Phelps's house, where he had some business to solicit, where we met Mr. Rogers, my neighbour, who did solicit against him, and talked very high, saying that he would not for a thousand pounds appear in a business that Swan did, at which Swan was very angry. But I believe he might be guilty enough. In the hall I understand how Monk is this morning gone into London with his army, and met with Mr. Fage, who told me that he do believe that Monk is gone, to secure some of the common council of the city, who were very high yesterday there, and did vote that they would not pay any taxes, till the house was filled up. I went to my office, where I wrote to my lord after I had been at the upper bench, where Sir Robert Pye this morning came, to desire his discharge from the tower, but it could not be granted. After that I went to Mrs. Jem, who I had promised to go along with to her aunt Wright's, but she was gone, so I went thither, and after drinking a glass of sack, I went back to Westminster Hall, and meeting with Mr. Pierce the surgeon, who would needs take me home, where Mr. Lucy, Burrell, and others dined, and after dinner I went home, and to Westminster Hall, where meeting Swan, I went with him by water to the temple, to our council, and did give him a fee to make a motion to-morrow in the exchequer for Mr. Downing, thence to Westminster Hall, where I heard an action very finely pleaded between my Lord Dorset and some other noble persons, his lady and other ladies of quality being here, and it was about three hundred and thirty pounds per annum that was to be paid to a poor spittal, which was given by some of his predecessors, and given on his side. Thence Swan and I to a drinking-house near Temple Bar, where while he wrote I played on my flagellet, till a dish of poached eggs was got ready for us, which we eat, and so by coach home. I called at Mr. Harper's, who told me how Monk had this day clapped up many of the common council, and that the Parliament had voted that he should pull down their gates and portcullises, their posts and their chains, which he do intend to do, and do lie in the city all night. I went home and got some alum to my mouth, where I have the beginnings of a cancer, and had also a plaster to my boil underneath my chin. 10th. In the morning I went to Mr. Swan, who took me to the court of wards, where I saw the three lords' commissioners sitting upon some cause where Mr. Scoble was concerned, and my lord Fountain took him up very roughly, about some things that he said. After that we went to the exchequer, where the barons were hearing of causes, and there I made affidavit that Mr. Downing was gone into Holland by order of the Council of State, and this affidavit I gave to Mr. Stevens, our lawyer. Thence to my office, where I got money of Mr. Hawley to pay the lawyer, and there found Mr. Leonard, one of the clerks of the Council, and took him to the Swan and gave him his morning draught, then home to dinner, and after that to the exchequer, where I heard all the afternoon a great many causes before the barons. In the end came ours, and Scrib proved clearly by his patent that the house and office did now belong to him. Our lawyer made some kind of opposition, but to no purpose, and so the cause was found against us, 
and the foreman of the jury brought in ten pounds damages, which the whole court cried shame of, and so he cried twelve pence. Thence I went home, vexed about this business, and there I found Mr. Moore, and with him went into London, to Mr. Fage, about the cancer in my mouth, which begins to grow dangerous, who gave me something for it, and also told me what Monk had done in the city, how he had pulled down the most part of the gates and chains that they could break down, and that he was now gone back to Whitehall. The city looked mighty blank, and cannot tell what in the world to do, the Parliament having this day ordered that the Common Council sit no more, but that new ones be chosen, according to what qualifications they shall give them. Thence I went and drank with Mr. Moore at the Sugar Loaf by Temple Bar, where Swan and I were last night, and so we parted. At home I found Mr. Hunt, who sat talking with me a while, and so to bed. 11th. This morning I lay long abed, and then to my office, where I read all the morning my Spanish book of Rome. At noon I walked in the hall, where I heard the news of a letter from Monk, who was now gone into the city again, and did resolve to stand for the sudden filling up of the house. And it was very strange how the countenance of men in the hall was all changed with joy in half an hour's time. So I went up to the lobby, where I saw the speaker reading of the letter, and after it was read, Sir A. Hazelrig came out very angry, and Billing, standing at the door, took him by the arm, and cried, "'Thou man, will thy beast carry thee no longer? Thou must fall!' The house presently after rose, and appointed to meet again at three o'clock. I went then down into the hall, where I met with Mr. Chetwin, who had not dined no more than myself, and so we went toward London, in our way calling at two or three shops, but could have no dinner. At last, within Temple Bar, we found a pullet ready roasted, and there we dined. After that he went to his office in Chancery Lane, calling at the Rolls, where I saw the lawyers pleading, then to his office, where I sat in his study singing, while he was with his man, Mr. Powell's son, looking after his business. Thence we took coach for the city to Guildhall, where the hall was full of people expecting Monk and Lord Mayor to come thither, and all very joyful. Here we stayed a great while, and at last meeting with a friend of his, we went to the three-ton tavern, and drank half a pint of wine, and not liking the wine we went to an alehouse, where we met with company of this third man's acquaintance, and there we drank a little. Hence I went alone to Guildhall to see whether Monk was come again or no, and met with him coming out of the chamber, where he had been with the mayor and alderman, but such a shout I never heard in all my life, crying out, "'God bless your excellence!' Here I met with Mr. Locke, and took him to an alehouse, and left him there to fetch Chetwin. When we were come together, Locke told us the substance of the letter that went from Monk to the Parliament, wherein, after complaints that he and his officers were put upon such officers against the city, as they could not do with any content or honour, that there are many members now in the house that were of the late tyrannical Committee of Safety, that Lambert and Vane are now in town, contrary to the vote of Parliament, that there were many in the house that do press for new oaths to be put upon men, whereas we have more cause to be sorry for the many oaths that we have already taken and broken, that the late petition of the fanatic people presented by Barebone, for the imposing of an oath upon all sorts of people, was received by the house with thanks, that therefore he do desire that all writs for filling up of the house be issued by Friday next, and that, in the meantime, he would retire into the city, and only leave them guards for the security of the house and council. The occasion of this was the order that he had last night to go into the city and disarm them, and take away their charter, whereby he and his officers say that the house had a mind to put them upon things that should make them odious, and so it would be in their power to do what they would with them. He told us that they had sent Scott and Robinson to him this afternoon, but he would not hear them, and that the mayor and aldermen had offered him their own houses for himself and his officers, and that his soldiers would lack for nothing. And indeed I saw many people give the soldiers drink and money, and all along in the streets cried, God bless them, and extraordinary good words. Hence we went to a merchant's house hard by, where Locke wrote a note and left, where I saw Sir Nicholas Crisp, and so we went to the Star Tavern, Monk being then at Benson's, where we dined, and I wrote a letter to my lord from thence. In Cheapside there was a great many bonfires, and bow bells, and all the bells in all the churches as we went home, were ringing. Hence we went homewards, it being about ten o'clock. But the common joy that was everywhere to be seen, the number of bonfires, there being fourteen between St. Dunstan's and Temple Bar, and at Strand Bridge I could at one view tell thirty-one fires. In King Street seven or eight, and all along burning and roasting and drinking for rumps, there being rumps tied upon sticks and carried up and down. The butchers at the Maypole in the Strand rang a peal with their knives, 
when they were going to sacrifice their rump. On Ludgate Hill there was one turning of the spit that had a rump tied upon it, and another basting of it. Indeed it was past imagination, both the greatness and the suddenness of it. At one end of the street you would think there was a whole lane of fire, and so hot that we were fain to keep still on the further side merely for heat. We came to the trekkers at Charing Cross, where Chetwin wrote a letter, and I gave him an account of what I had wrote for him to write. Thence home and sent my letters to the post-house in London, and my wife and I, after Mr. Hunt was gone, whom I found waiting at my house, went out again to show her the fires, and after walking as far as the exchange, we returned, and to bed. Twelfth. In the morning, it being Lord's Day, Mr. Pierce came to me to inquire how things go. We drank our morning draught together, and thence to Whitehall, where Dr. Holmes preached, but I stayed not to hear. But walking in the court I heard that Sir Arthur Hazelrig was newly gone into the city to Monk, and that Monk's wife removed from Whitehall last night. Home again, where at noon came according to my invitation my cousin Thomas Pepys and his partner, and dined with me. But before dinner we went and took a walk round the park, it being a most pleasant day as ever I saw. After dinner we three went into London together, where I heard that Monk had been at Paul's in the morning, and the people had shouted much at his coming out of the church. In the afternoon he was at a church in Broad Street, wherever at he do lodge. But not knowing how to see him, we went and walked half an hour in Moorfields, which were full of people, it being so fine a day. Here I took leave of them, and so to Paul's, where I met with Mr. Curtin's apprentice, the crooked fellow, and walked up and down with him two hours, sometimes in the street, looking for a tavern to drink in. But not finding any open, we durst not knock. Other times in the churchyard, where one told me that he had seen the letter printed. Thence to Mr. Turner's, where I found my wife, Mr. Edward Pepys, and Roger and Mr. Armiger being there, to whom I gave as good an account of things as I could, and so to my father's, where Charles Glasscock was overjoyed to see how things are now, who told me the boys had last night broke bare bones windows. Hence home, and being near home we missed our maid, and were at a great loss, and went back a great way to find her. But when we could not see her, we went homewards, and found her there, got before us, which we wondered at greatly. So to bed, where my wife and I had some high words upon my telling her that I would fling the dog which her brother gave her out of window, if he dirted the house any more. Thirteenth. To my office till noon, thence home to dinner, my mouth being very bad of the cancer, and my left leg beginning to be sore again. After dinner to see Mrs. Jem, and in the way met with Caton on foot in the street, and talked with her a little, so home and took my wife to my father's. In my way I went to Playford's, and for two books that I had, and six shillings sixpence to boot, I had my great book of songs, which he sells always, for four shillings. At my father's I stayed a while, while my mother sent her maid Bess to Cheapside, for some herbs to make a water for my mouth. Then I went to see Mr. Cumberland, and after a little stay with him I returned, and took my wife home, where after supper to bed. This day Monk was invited to Whitehall to dinner by my lords. Not seeming willing, he would not come. I went to Mr. Fage from my father's, who had been this afternoon with Monk, who do promise to live and die with the city, and for the honour of the city. And indeed the city is very open-handed to the soldiers, that they are most of them drunk all day, and have money given them. He did give me something for my mouth, which I did use this night. Fourteenth. Called out in the morning by Mr. Moore, whose voice my wife, hearing in my dressing-chamber with me, got herself ready, and came down and challenged him for her valentine, this being the day. To Westminster Hall, there being many new remonstrances and declarations from many counties to Monk and the city, and one coming from the north from Sir Thomas Fairfax. Hence I took him to the Swan, and gave him his morning draught. So to my office, where Mr. Hill of Worcestershire came to see me and my partner in our office, with whom we went to Will's to drink. At noon I went home, and so to Mr. Crewe's, but they had dined, and so I went to see Mrs. Jem, where I stayed a while, and home again, where I stayed an hour or two at my lute and so forth to Westminster Hall, where I heard that the Parliament hath now changed the oath so much talked of to a promise, and that among other qualifications for the members that are to be chosen, one is, that no man, nor the son of any man that hath been in arms during the life of the father, shall be capable of being chosen to sit in Parliament. To Wills, where like a fool I stayed and lost sixpence at cards, so home and wrote a letter to my lord by the post. So after supper to bed. This day, by an order of the house, Sir H. Vane was sent out of town to his house in Lincolnshire. Fifteenth. Called up in the morning by Captain Holland and Captain Cuttons, 
and with them to Harper's, thence to my office, thence with Mr. Hill of Worcestershire to Will's, where I gave him a letter to Nan Pepys, and some merry pamphlets against the rump, to carry to her into the country. So to Mr. Crew's, where the dining-room being full, Mr. Walgrave and I dined below in the buttery, by ourselves, upon a good dish of buttered salmon. Thence to Herring the Merchant, about my Lord's Worcester money, and back to Paul's churchyard, where I stayed reading in fullest history of the Church of England, an hour or two, and so to my father's, where Mr. Hill came to me, and I gave him direction what to do at Worcester about the money. Thence to my Lady Wright's, and gave her a letter from my Lord privily. So to Mrs. Jem, and sat with her, who dined at Mr. Crew's to-day, and told me that there was at her coming away at least forty gentlemen, I suppose members that were secluded, for Mr. Wargrave told me that there were about thirty met there the last night, came dropping in one after another thither. Thence home and wrote into the country against to-morrow, by the carrier, and so to bed. At my father's I heard how my cousin Kate Joyce had a fall yesterday from her horse, and had some hurt thereby. No news to-day, but all quiet, to see what the Parliament will do, about the issuing of the writs to-morrow for filling up of the house, according to Monk's desire. 16th. In the morning at my lute. Then came Shaw and Hawley, and I gave them their morning draught at my house. So to my office, where I wrote by the carrier to my lord, and sealed my letter at Wells, and gave it Old East to carry it to the carrier's, and to take up a box of china oranges, and two little barrels of scallops at my house, which Captain Cutton sent to me for my lord. Here I met with Osborne, and with Shaw and Spicer, and we went to the Sun Tavern, in expectation of a dinner, where we had sent us only two trenches full of meat, at which we were very merry, while in came Mr. Wade and his friend Captain Moyes, who told us of his hopes to get an estate merely for his name's sake. And here we stayed till seven at night, I winning a quart of sack of Shaw, that one trencherful that was sent us was all lamb, and he that it was veal. I, by having but threepence in my pocket, made shift to spend no more, whereas if I had had more, I had spent more as the rest did, so that I see it is an advantage to a man to carry little in his pocket. Home, and after supper, and a little at my flute, I went to bed. 17th. In the morning, Tom that was my lord's footboy came to see me, and had ten shillings of me of the money which I have to keep of his, so that now I have but thirty-five shillings more of his. Then came Mr. Hills, the instrument-maker, and I consulted with him about the altering my lute and my vial. After that I went into my study, and did up my accounts, and found that I am about forty pounds beforehand in the world, and that is all. So to my office, and from thence brought Mr. Hawley home with me to dinner. And after dinner wrote a letter to Mr. Downing about his business, and gave it Hawley, and so went to Mr. Gunning's to his weekly fast. And after sermon, meeting there with Monsieur Lampertinon, we went and walked in the park, till it was dark. I played on my pipe at the Echo, and then drank a cup of ale at Jacob's. So to Westminster Hall, and he with me, where I heard that some of the members of the house were gone to meet with some of the secluded members, and General Monk, in the city. Hence we went to Whitehall, thinking to hear more news, where I met with Mr. Hunt, who told me how Monk had sent for all his goods that he had here into the city, and yet again he told me, that some of the members of the house had this day laid in firing into their lodgings at Whitehall for a good while, so that we are at a great stand to think what will become of things, whether Monk will stand to the Parliament or no. Hence M. Lampertinant and I to Harper's, and there drank a cup or two to the King, and to his fair sister Frances good health, of whom we had much discourse, of her not being much the worse for the smallpox, which she had this last summer. So home and to bed. This day we are invited to my uncle Fenner's wedding feast, but went not, this being the twenty-seventh year. Eighteenth. A great while at my violin voice, learning to sing Flyboy, Flyboy, without book. So to my office, where little to do. In the hall I met with Mr. Eglin, and one Looker, a famous gardener, servant to my Lord Salisbury. And among other things, the gardener told a strange passage in good earnest. Home to dinner, and then went to my lord's lodgings, to my turret there, and took away most of my books, and sent them home by my maid. Thither came Captain Holland to me, who took me to the Half Moon Tavern, and Mr. Southern, Blackburn's clerk. Thence he took me to the Mitre in Fleet Street, where we heard, in a room over the music room, very plainly through the ceiling. Here we parted, and I to Mr. Watton's, and with him to an alehouse, and drank while he told me a great many stories of comedies that he had formerly seen acted, and the names of the principal actors, and gave me a very good account of it. Thence to Whitehall, where I met with Llewellyn, and in the clerk's chamber wrote a letter to my lord, so home and to bed. This day two soldiers were hanged in the Strand, for their late mutiny at Somerset House. 
19th lord's day early in the morning i set my books that i brought home yesterday up in order in my study thenceforth to mr harps to drink a draught of pearl whither by appointment m lampertinot who did intend too upon my desire to go along with me to st bartholomew's to hear one mr sparks but it raining very hard we went to mr gunning's and heard an excellent sermon and speaking of the character that the scripture gives of Anne, the mother of the Blessed Virgin, he did there speak largely in commendation of widowhood, and not as we do to marry two or three wives or husbands, one after another. Here I met with Mr. Moore, and went home with him to dinner, where he told me the discourse that happened between the secluded members and the members of the house, before Monk last Friday. How the secluded said, that they did not intend by coming in to express revenge upon these men, but only to meet and dissolve themselves, and only to issue writs for a free parliament he told me how hazelrig was afraid to have the candle carried before him for fear that the people seeing him would do him hurt and that he is afraid to appear in the city that there is great likelihood that the secluded members will come in and so mr crew and my lord are likely to be great men at which i was very glad after dinner there was many secluded members come in to mr crew which it being the lord's day did make mr moore believe that there was something extraordinary in the business Hence home, and brought my wife to Mr. Mossum's to hear him, and indeed he made a very good sermon, but only too eloquent for a pulpit. Here Mr. Lampertinot helped me to a seat. After sermon to my father's, and fell in discourse concerning our going to Cambridge the next week with my brother John. To Mrs. Turner, where her brother, Mr. Edward Pepys, was there, and I sat a great while talking of public business of the times with him. So to supper to my father's, all supper talking of John's going to Cambridge. So home and it raining my wife got my mother's french mantle and my brother john's hat and so we went all along home and to bed twentieth in the morning at my lute then to my office where my partner and i made even our balance took him home to dinner with me where my brother john came to dine with me after dinner i took him to my study at home and at my lord's and gave him some books and other things against his going to cambridge after he was gone i went forth to westminster hall where i met with chetwin simons and gregory and with them to marshes at Whitehall to drink, and stayed there a pretty while reading a pamphlet well writ and directed to General Monk, in praise of the form of monarchy which was settled here before the wars. They told me how the Speaker learnt all to refuse to sign the writs for choice of new members in the place of the excluded, and by that means the writs could not go out to-day. In the evening Simons and I to the coffee-club, where nothing to do, only I heard Mr. Harrington and my Lord of Dorset and another Lord talking of getting another place as the cockpit, and they did believe it would come to something. After a small debate upon the question whether learned or unlearned subjects are the best, the club broke up very poorly, and I do not think they will meet any more. Hence with vines, etc., to wills, and after a pot or two home, and so to bed. 21st. In the morning going out I saw many soldiers going towards Westminster, and was told that they were going to admit the secluded members again. So I to Westminster Hall, and in Chancery Row, I saw about twenty of them who had been at Whitehall with General Monk, who came thither this morning, and made a speech to them, and recommended to them a commonwealth, and against Charles Stuart. They came to the house, and went in one after another, and at last the speaker came. But it is very strange that this could be carried so private, that the other members of the house heard nothing of all this, till they found them in the house, insomuch that the soldiers that stood there to let in the secluded members, they took for such as they had ordered to stand there to hinder their coming in. Mr. Prynne came with an old basket-hilt sword on, and had a great many great shouts upon his going into the hall. They sat till noon, and at their coming out Mr. Crewe saw me, and bid me come to his house, which I did, and he would have me dine with him, which I did, and he very joyful told me that the house had made General Monk general of all the forces in England, Scotland, and Ireland, and that upon Monk's desire, for the service that Lawson had lately done in pulling down the Committee of Safety, he had the command of the sea for the time being. He advised me to send for my lord forthwith, and told me that there is no question that, if he will, he may now be employed again, and that the House do intend to do nothing more than to issue writs, and to settle a foundation for a free Parliament. After dinner I back to Westminster Hall with him in his coach. Here I met with Mr. Locke and Purcell, masters of music, and with them to the coffee-house, in a room next the water, by ourselves, where we spent an hour or two till Captain Taylor came to us, who told us that the House had voted the gates of the city to be made up again and the members of the city that are imprisoned to be set at liberty, and that Sir G. Booth's case be brought into the house to-morrow. Here we had variety of brave Italian and Spanish songs, and a cannon for eight voices, which Mr. Locke had lately made on these words, Domine salvum fac regem, 
an admirable thing. Here also Captain Taylor began a discourse of something that he had lately writ about Gablekind, in answer to one that had wrote a piece upon the same subject, and indeed discovered a great deal of study in antiquity in his discourse. Here out of the window it was a most pleasant sight to see the city from one end to the other, with a glory about it, so high was the light of the bonfires, and so thick round the city, and the bells rang everywhere. Hence home and rode to my lord, afterwards came down and found Mr. Hunt, troubled at this change, and Mr. Spong, who stayed late with me, singing of a song or two, and so parted. My wife not very well, went to bed before. This morning I met in the hall with Mr. Fuller, of Christ, and told him of my design to go to Cambridge and whither. He told me very freely the temper of Mr. Widrington, how he did oppose all the fellows in the college, and that there was a great distance between him and the rest, at which I was very sorry, for that he told me he feared it would be little to my brother's advantage to be his pupil. 22nd. In the morning intended to have gone to Mr. Crewe's to borrow some money, but it raining I forbore, and went to my lord's lodging, and looked that all things were well there. Then home and sang a song to my vial, so to my office and to Will's, where Mr. Pierce found me out, and told me that he would go with me to Cambridge, where Colonel Eyre's regiment, to which he was surgeon, lieth. Walking in the hall I saw Major General Brown, who had a long time been banished by the rump, but now with his beard overgrown he comes abroad and sat in the house. To my father's to dinner were nothing but a small dish of powdered beef, and dish of carrots, they being all busy to get things ready for my brother John to go to-morrow. After dinner, my wife staying there, I went to Mr. Cruz and got five pounds of Mr. Andrews, and so to Mrs. Jemima, who now hath her instrument about her neck, and indeed is infinitely altered, and holds her head upright. I paid her maid forty shillings, of the money that I have received of Mr. Andrews. Hence home to my study, where I only wrote thus much of this day's passage, to this, and so out again. To Whitehall, where I met with Will Simons and Mr. Mabbott at Marshes, who told me how the House had this day voted, that the gates of the city should be set up at the cost of the State, and that Major General Brown's being proclaimed a traitor be made void, and several other things of that nature. Home for my lantern, and so to my father's, where I directed John what books to be put for Cambridge. After that to supper, where my uncle Fenner and my aunt, Theophila Turner, and Joyce, at a brave leg of veal roasted, and were very merry against John's going to Cambridge. I observed this day how abominably Barebone's windows are broke again last night. At past nine o'clock my wife and I went home. 23rd, Thursday. My birthday, now twenty-seven years. A pretty fair morning. I rose, and after writing a while in my study I went forth. To my office, where I told Mr. Hawley of my thoughts to go out of town to-morrow. Hither Mr. Fuller comes to me, and my uncle Thomas too. Thence I took them to drink, and so put off my uncle. So with Mr. Fuller home to my house, where he dined with me, and he told my wife and me a great many stories of his adversities, since these troubles, in being forced to travel in the Catholic countries, etc. He shewed me his bills, but I had not money to pay him. We parted, and I to Whitehall, where I was to see my horse, which Mr. Garthwaite lends me to-morrow. So home, where Mr. Pierce comes to me about appointing time and place, where and when to meet to-morrow. So to Westminster Hall, where, after the house rose, I met with Mr. Crew, who told me that my lord was chosen, by seventy-three voices, to be one of the council of state. Mr. Pierpoint had the most, a hundred and one, and himself the next, two. He brought me in the coach home. Here Mr. Onslow being in it. I back to the hall, and at Mrs. Mitchell's shop stayed talking a great while with her, my chaplain, Mr. Mumford, and drank a pot or two of ale on a wager that Mr. Prynne is not of the council. Home and wrote to my lord the news of the choice of the council by the post, and so to bed. 24th. I rose very early, and taking horse at Scotland Yard, at Mr. Garthwaite's stable, I rode to Mr. Pierce's, who rose, and in a quarter of an hour, leaving his wife in bed, with whom Mr. Lucy Methought was very free as she lay in bed, we both mounted, and so set forth about seven of the clock, the day and the way very foul. About where we overtook Mr. Blayton, brother-in-law to Dick Bynes, who went thenceforwards with us, and at Puckridge we baited, where we had a loin of mutton fried, and were very merry, but the way exceeding bad from where thither. Then up again, and as far as Fulmer, within six miles of Cambridge, my mare being almost tired. Here we lay at the checker, playing at cards till supper, which was a breast of veal roasted. I lay with Mr. Pierce, who we left here the next morning, upon his going to Hinchingbrook, to speak with my lord before his going to London, and we two come to Cambridge by eight o'clock in the morning. Twenty-fifth, to the Falcon in the Petit Curie, where we found my father and brother very well. After dressing myself, about ten o'clock, my father, brother, and I to Mr. Widrington at Christ College. 
who received us very civilly, and caused my brother to be admitted, while my father, he and I, sat talking. After that done, we take leave. My father and brother went to visit some friends, Pepys, scholars in Cambridge, while I went to Magdalen College to Mr. Hill, with whom I found Mr. Zanke, Burton, and Hollins, and was exceeding civilly received by them. I took leave and promised to sup with them, and to my inn again, where I dined with some others that were there at an ordinary. After dinner my brother to the college, and my father and I to my cousin Angius to see them, where Mr. Fairbrother came to us. Here we sat a while talking. My father he went to look after his things at the carrier's, and my brother's chamber, while Mr. Fairbrother, my cousin Angia, and Mr. Zanke, whom I met at Mr. Merton's shop, where I bought Elenchus Motum, having given my former to Mr. Downing when he was here, to the three tons, where we drank pretty hard, and many healths to the king, etc., till it began to be darkish. Then we broke up, and I and Mr. Zanke went to Magdalen College, where a very handsome supper at Mr. Hill's chambers, I suppose upon a club among them, where in their discourse I could find that there was nothing at all left of the old preciseness in their discourse, especially on Saturday nights. And Mr. Zanke told me that there was no such thing nowadays among them at any time. After supper and some discourse then, to my inn, where I found my father in his chamber, and after some discourse, and he well satisfied with this day's work, we went to bed, my brother lying with me his things not being come by the carrier that he could not lie in the college. 26th, Sunday. My brother went to the college to chapel. My father and I went out in the morning, and walked out in the fields behind King's College, and in King's College Chapel Yard, where we met with Mr. Fairbrother, who took us to Botolph's Church, where we heard Mr. Nicholas of Queen's College, who I knew in my time to be Tripos, with great applause upon this text, for thy commandments are broad. Thence my father and I to Mr. Woodrington's chamber to dinner, where he used us very courteously again, and had two fellow commoners at table with him, and Mr. Pepper, a fellow of the college. After dinner, while we sat talking by the fire, Mr. Pierce's man came to tell me that his master was come to town. So my father and I took leave, and found Mr. Pierce at our inn, who told us that he had lost his journey, for my lord was gone from Hinchingbrook to London, on Thursday last, at which I was a little put to a stand. So after a cup of drink I went to Magdalen College, to get the certificate of the college for my brother's entrance there, that he might save his ear. I met with Mr. Burton in the court, who took me to Mr. Petchell's chamber, where he was, and Mr. Zanke. By and by Mr. Petchell and Zanke and I went out, Petchell to church, Zanke and I to the Rose Tavern, where we sat and drank till sermon done, and then Mr. Petchell came to us, and we three sat drinking the King's and his whole family's health, till it began to be dark. Then we parted, Zanke and I went to my lodging, where we found my father and Mr. Pierce at the door, and I took them both and Mr. Blayton to the Rose Tavern, and there gave them a quart or two of wine, not telling them that we had been there before. After this we broke up, and my father, Mr. Zanke, and I to my cousin Anjo to supper, where I caused two bottles of wine to be carried from the Rose Tavern that was drunk up, and I had not the wit to let them know at table that it was I that paid for them, and so I lost my thanks for them. After supper Mr. Fairbrother, who supped there with us, took me into a room by himself, and shewed me a pitiful copy of verses upon Mr. Prynne, which he esteemed very good, and desired that I would get them given to Mr. Prynne, in hopes that he would get him some place for it, which I said I would do, but did laugh in my sleeve to think of his folly, though indeed a man that has always expressed great civility to me. After that we sat down and talked. I took leave of all my friends, and so to my inn, where after I had wrote a note, and enclosed the certificate to Mr. Widrington, I bade good night to my father, and John went to bed but I stayed up a little while, playing the fool, with the lass of the house at the door of the chamber, and so to bed. 27th. Up by four o'clock, and after I was ready, took my leave of my father, whom I left in bed, and the same of my brother John, to whom I gave ten shillings. Mr. Blayton and I took horse, and straight to Saffron Walden, where at the White Hart we set up our horses, and took the master of the house to shew us Audley and House, who took us on foot through the park, and so to the house, where the housekeeper shewed us all the house, in which the stateliness of the ceilings, chimney-pieces, and form of the whole, was exceedingly worth seeing. He took us into the cellar, where we drank most admirable drink, a health to the king. Here I played on my flagellet, there being an excellent echo. He shewed us excellent pictures, two especially those of the four evangelists and Henry the Eighth. After that I gave the man two shillings for his trouble, and went back again. In our going my landlord carried us through a very old hospital or almshouse, where forty poor people was maintained, a very old foundation, and over the chimney in the mantelpiece was an inscription in brass, Orate pre anima tomai bird, etc., 
and the poor box also was on the same chimney-piece, with an iron door and locks to it, into which I put sixpence. They brought me a draught of their drink in a brown bowl tipped with silver, which I drank off, and at the bottom was a picture of the virgin and the child in her arms, done in silver. So we went to our inn, and after eating of something, and kissed the daughter of the house, she being very pretty, we took leave, and so that night the road pretty good, but the weather rainy to Epping, where we sat and played a game at cards, and after supper, and some merry talk with a plain bold maid of the house, we went to bed. 28th. Up in the morning, and had some red herrings to our breakfast, while my boot-heel was amending. By the same token the boy left the hole as big as it was before. Then to horse, and for London through the forest, where we found the way good, but only in one path, which we kept as if we had rode through a canal all the way. We found the shops all shut, and the militia of the Red Regiment in arms at the old exchange, among whom I found and spoke to Nick Osborne, who told me that it was a thanksgiving day through the city for the return of the Parliament. At Paul's I liked, Mr. Blayton holding my horse, where I found Dr. Reynolds in the pulpit, and General Monk there, who was to have a great entertainment at Grocer's Hall. So home, where my wife and all well. Shifted myself, and so to Mr. Crewe's, and then to Sir Harry Wright's, where I found my lord at dinner, who called for me in, and was glad to see me. There was at dinner also Mr. John Wright and his lady, a very pretty lady, Alderman Allen's daughter. I dined here with Will Howe, and after dinner went out with him to buy a hat, calling in my way, and saw my mother, which we did at the plough in Fleet Street by my lord's direction, but not as for him. Here we met with Mr. Pierce a little before, and he took us to the Greyhound Tavern, and gave us a pint of wine, and as the rest of the seamen do, talked very high again of my lord. After we had done about the hat, we went homewards, he to Mr. Crewe, and I to Mrs. Jem, and sat with her a little. Then home, where I found Mr. Shepley, almost drunk, come to see me. Afterwards Mr. Spong comes, with whom I went up and played with him a duo or two, and so good night. I was indeed a little vexed with Mr. Shepley, but said nothing, about his breaking open of my study at my house, merely to give him the key of the stair door at my lord's, which lock he might better have broke than mine. Twenty-ninth, to my office, and drank at Will's with Mr. Moore who told me how my lord is chosen general at sea by the council, and that it is thought that Monk will be joined with him therein. Home and dined, after dinner, my wife and I by water to London, and thence to Herrings, the merchant in Coleman Street, about fifty pounds which he promises I shall have on Saturday next. So to my mother's, and then to Mrs. Turner's, of whom I took leave, and her company, because she was to go out of town to-morrow with Mr. Pepys into Norfolk. Here my cousin Norton gave me a brave cup of methaglin, the first I ever drank to my mother's, and supped there. She shewed me a letter to my father from my uncle, inviting him to come to Brampton, while he is in the country. So home and to bed. This day my lord came to the house, the first time since he came to town, but he had been at the council before. End of February.